Hey, it worked. Okay, cool. What's going on, guys? Carrie Steelman Schmidt here, CEO of the Fit Crew. It is February 24th, and today I am going to be teaching you some serious shit. It's gonna be good. Um, this is this is something that I learned in my training with Tony Robbins. So if you guys um, were following the adventures this summer, hi, Lisbeth. I went to a Tony Robbins conference this summer. Uh, I walked on fire at the UPW event. So it's called Unleash the Power Within. And this was a concept that he touched on a little bit. Julie is going to that coming up here pretty soon, right? Um, and this was a concept that he touched on a little bit, but I've heard more and more about it in his podcast and kind of made it my own uh, and found ways to incorporate it into my coaching. And so for those of you who are on in the Dash to Diamond group. I'm going to be going over this tomorrow and I thought this would be like a good way to practice and kind of work out, <laughs> work out the kinks with my own team and get questions from you guys and just kind of um, see if there's anything that I'm missing in this process that you guys can add to it um, to make sure that I, you know, we're delivering the best content possible. Um, so without further ado, uh, this, the idea for this call really came from a bunch of coaching sessions that I've had this last week with people who are stuck in this cycle of self-sabotage in, in all different ways. And it's the same cycle, like whether or not, you, whether you are in the cycle of self-sabotage with your weight or with your fitness journey or with relationships that can happen there too, or with your coaching business. It doesn't matter. It's the same exact cycle. So, so this is how it works. You're in a lot of pain. You're freaking miserable. And that's usually the point at which you're ready to make a change, right? Like think about all the major changes that you've made in your life. Usually the energy to make that kind of a drastic change comes from pain. That's why you got so many girls right after a breakup looking fly af right they break up they're like in a lot of pain and man are they going to use that to push them like never again am i going to feel this way never again am i going to feel this low am i going to no like i'm in charge of me things are making noise and i can't hang with that okay so that same cycle so it goes pain and that leads to action Okay, you make a ton of action and then you start to get results. And, ooh, I forgot to mute her buddy. Um, so you start to get results and when you start to get results, it takes the pain away. So what happens? As soon as we start getting results, the pain is gone. Therefore, our drive to make a change is also gone or goes down significantly. So if you've ever been in a situation with coaching where you're like, you're doing power hours, you're like starting to have these conversations, people are responding and you're like, ooh, this is great, this is going really well, I feel like I'm, I'm doing pretty good here. And then all of a sudden it's like two weeks later and you're like, wait, I don't really like talk to new, what happened? Like I was like talking to new people and then all of a sudden there was like this really, really slow kind of under the surface sizzle and like everything just kind of, I don't know, fades out. Like you don't even realize you're doing it sometimes. And so then you return to exactly where you started that. Same thing with health and fitness. So if you are in that cycle of self-sabotage where you start out super hungry, super strong with coaching, and then next thing you know, you're on the lazy train and you feel like you're having to start all over, know that this is probably the cycle that you're going through and it's the same cycle, but, but just by recognizing it, you can create an action plan to stop. So I'm going to teach you guys the seven steps. Okay. So you know, if you're able to take notes, take notes. If you're not able to take notes, uh, this is recorded and I will put it up for you guys tonight. So the first step in making any kind of a change is weird. It sounds weird, but just trust, just trust and believe you got to get disturbed. Like you got to get messed up about something in your head. 
And I know that that's not a place that any of us wants to live in. I'm not telling you like stay in a place of torture or like emotionally abuse yourself. That's not what I'm suggesting right now. I'm just saying if you want to make a massive change, you have to be emotionally connected to what it is that you're wanting to change. And the first thing you're going to have to do is, is recognize like what result are you wanting to get and what is the negative impact of you not getting it? So like what most people do is they start to get disturbed about something. They start to get really, really mad. Like with my beach body business, I'll be like, okay, you know what? Enough is enough, Carrie. Like you've been saying that you're going to be five star for freaking like all the years, like since you started <laughs> this business, enough is enough. Like, let's do this. Let's go. Let's get hungry about it. Um, but just saying that doesn't really make me feel anything. If you've ever been in that situation, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes there's certain goals, but there's like no emotion really attached to it. So it doesn't matter. So what I had to do is I had to reframe it in a way that made me actually disturbed. I had to start thinking about, um, what the negative impact would be of not reaching those goals. Like for example, not hitting some of those bigger goals in my business and building it up so that I have strong enough leaders to like be building their own teams means that things like going to pole dancing camp over the summer, that's not going to be a reality for me. If I don't have other strong leaders on this team, that can help me to lead this organization, if I'm doing everything by myself, is there any chance that I could just take a month off and go to pole dancing camp? No way. Okay, so that's one thing that was like, ooh, that would really, really suck. Still didn't make me very emotional though. So then I started thinking about the financial opportunity, what it would mean to be developing leaders of leaders of leaders and what that would do for Craig and I financially. I started thinking about the fact that we want to adopt. International adoption is very, very important to both of us, but especially to me because I have lived in orphanages in different parts of the world and seen the treatment of children. And I have a unique set of skills to be able to help a child who doesn't speak English transition, right, for my job in, as a teacher. So when I start thinking about like being a parent and like the financial opportunity that would come with being able to adopt a child not just like pole dancing camp having to leave when you adopt a child internationally you have to go and you have to be ready to like leave on moments notice and go and stay in that country for a certain amount of time I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that process but it's a it's a tough one it's it takes a lot of money and it takes having a lot of freedom to be able to do that now even just saying that my voice got a little bit quivery my eyes started like, I started tearing up a little bit because when I think about doing this so that I could like go to pole dancing camp or so that I can hit this rank, it doesn't freaking matter. But once you find a why that makes you tear up, that's when it's going to start to matter. So when I think about, okay, if I'm not doing the things that I know I need to do, like recruiting leaders, training leaders, if I'm not showing up to do those things every day, it could very very directly impact my ability to be a mother. And I know that sounds like extreme, but that's what you have to do sometimes to get dis disturbed. You have to like sometimes make it worse than it even is in your head and get yourself upset about what it is that you are not able to do because of your lack of hard work, because of this change you need to make. So think about what stories you tell yourself to get out of pain. So most of the time we start to go into that mindset of thinking about like why something sucks and instantly all of our defense mechanisms come up and say like oh no you feel bad it's bad stop feeling bad stop feeling bad so we do things like we turn on netflix or we ha take like have a glass of wine or we start listening to music or we go start talking to other people about their problems and we do anything else to avoid that. We don't want to feel that pain. Or we tell ourselves stories that will make it okay. Like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much doing those things. Like I'm doing most of those things. I'm doing most of the things on my to-do list. I've been working pretty hard. 
I can do it tomorrow. I don't really have time to do some of that stuff today. So those phrases are all softeners. They're all excuses that are making it so that I don't feel as bad about not putting in the work that it takes. Okay, so step two is you have to make a decision to change. So for whatever it is that your goal is, you got to use the sentence stem like, I'm disturbed about what is it? So for me, I'm disturbed about not having a team of leaders. That's something that I want. Why am I committed to this? Because if I don't have a team of leaders, it's going to be really, really hard for Craig and I to be financially secure enough to be able to adopt children internationally. So then the next step is creating an action plan. Okay, so with your action plan, first step, you want to make a brain dump. So you think about every single thing, every single step that you could take, every single little action that's on there that you could do, maybe five minute actions that you could do that could get you closer to your goal right freaking now. Okay, so if I'm thinking of this like long term plan, like I want to be able to adopt kids, and I know I need to be able to attract more leaders, train more leaders, and do that more efficiently, that can feel really freaking overwhelming. Like how many of you would be overwhelmed by that idea? Guys, I'm not getting a whole lot of feedback from you right now. I'm seeing ponytails and butts. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> hey, Al, welcome to the call. Thank you, Christina. How, like that's really overwhelming, right? That's too much. It's like too big. It feels like too big of a freaking goal. But like, that's why we're going to break it down into little five minute chunks. Like there are things right freaking now that I could do to get closer to my goal. I could send out coaching invites to my current challengers. I could let them know the potential that I see in them to be leaders, a leader of leaders themselves. I could pour into one of the awesome leaders that I have on the team and check in on them and see if there's anything I can do to help them. I can make a post about entrepreneurship and how I'm looking for entrepreneurs to be part of my team. I can continue to build, like I can set up a coffee date with somebody who I think has coaching potential in my area. Okay. Those are all things that would take like, you know, five minutes that I could do now. So you want to make a brain dump and have all of those ideas on there and then star three. Star three things that are like a must do, like you have to do them. Okay, so that's step three is creating an action plan. Um, there's going to be lots of actions that can get you closer to your goal. And I feel like in this business, we're really lucky because we have the business activity tracker. You guys, that's how the business activity tracker was created, right? It's like, how can we break this up in little teeny tiny chunks so that coaches don't feel super duper overwhelmed and can like do a little bit each day to get closer to their goal. Ah, what if we put it into this little tracker majig that they can check off on their to-do list every day so they know that they're on track. That's why it was created. So if you have not downloaded your business activity tracker yet, it's time. Here's your sign, Cassandra Lane Steelman. Here's your sign. So, Next step is you need to identify, ooh, Elle's got her. She's like, hey, look at my bat, look at my bat. Next step is you got to identify what your limiting beliefs are. Okay, so all of us have limiting beliefs. And usually it's the story that you're telling yourself when you're turning on Netflix and haven't done your work yet. It's the story that you're telling yourself when you're like debating whether or not to do a power hour or work on your business and you say something to yourself and choose not to do it. What is that thing for you? Is it, I'm too tired to do this? Like a lack of energy. A lot of, I've heard a lot of coaches say that. One of the coaches I was working with today said, um, She said that, that she felt like she was too overwhelmed, like she didn't have the energy to do it. But what we identified through this coaching session was that 
she was actually overwhelmed and lacking energy because she wasn't doing it. She wasn't doing the things on the list that would give her energy. So it, it, she was thinking like, I'm so low in energy, I can't possibly do one more thing. But we realized that that was a limiting belief that was holding her back. In fact, she wasn't doing enough of the things that would fill her cup. She wasn't doing enough of the actions that would like pour energy into her and light her fire. And that's a limiting belief that can hold you back in so many different areas. So she had to change. I don't have enough energy. I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. She had to change that limiting belief to I have when I do my business activity tracker, I'm full of energy. I'm full of life and I'm able to accomplish anything else in my day. Okay. I had another, uh, another girl that I was working with today who said that she didn't have time to eat. And I've definitely been there. She didn't have time to eat. She was so busy and had so much going on. She didn't have time to eat. So that was a limiting belief. We ended up figuring out that really by eating, she was going to increase her productivity to a level that like that 15 minute break she would be taking would make up for so much of the time that she had lost just by being in brain fog by not having enough fuel we compared it to riding a scooter like having an electric scooter you're like nah, 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 and it's it was like a rainbow unicorn style scooter because you got to have a really good visual of it she's like flying to do all the things she needs to do boom, 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 boom. and all of a sudden she needs to stop for gas, but she doesn't because she's too busy. She doesn't have time for that. So she keeps going boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, it putters out. She's like, but I still don't have time to stop. So then she's like foot scooting it. And foot scoot herself all the way to all these different goals, exhausting herself totally on empty. And if homegirl would just take a freaking second, to go off, get some gasoline, refuel. She'd be zooming off unicorn style to all the things she had to do the rest of the day. But she just kept telling herself the same story. I don't have time to stop. I don't have time to stop. I don't have time. Okay, so what limiting belief are you telling yourself over and over and over that is holding you back? So step four is changing your limiting belief. Step five, you gotta set yourself up to win. Okay, so if you have your business activity tracker, guys, and you've got it like deep inside some notebook that you need to uncover in like the darkest alley room of your house that like smells kind of funky and your cat's already peed in it and like you hate being in that space, you're not really setting yourself up for success, are you? Are ya? We identified earlier, one of the girls I was coaching, that there were some things that she could add to her space that would kind of sweeten the deal. Make her even more motivated to do the things that she knows she needs to do. Okay, so some of those things that you can do are like listening to music when you're listening to your business activity tracker. Like having a list of your favorite songs, like the pump up songs that get you the most jazzed. Or maybe you drink a glass of wine every day. I'm not judging you. Drink it while you do your business activity tracker. I have a feeling that your invites will come out a lot smoother anyway. Okay. Or maybe, maybe you have like a special coffee drink. That's like your favorite thing. Maybe that's what you make every time you go into the space. What if you, like Kay Bella does with her workout room, what if you filled that space with quotes? Your favorite quotes, your, the things that motivate you most, and like little messages that you've gotten that made you really, really happy, put them up on sticky notes around the space that you work. Get freaking cute glittery pens and highlighters and like the cutest little notebook so that you can make this experience of going to work your business something that like in and of itself is really fun and exciting. Like I've got a glittery background. I've got colored pens. I've got a Reese's egg. Do I get to eat this right now? No, I do not, because I, I have not finished my team call. I do not get the Reese's egg or the sparkly water until my freaking to-do list is done. Am I bribing myself? Yes, yes I am. And it works, yo. 
if you let yourself be bribed, it works. So we've now associated the pain of not doing this thing with something much greater, right? It's not just, ooh, I wanna build my business because I gotta build my business because I'm supposed to build. No, I gotta build my business because there are children in Africa that are starving and dying while I am over here being lazy, sitting on the couch watching Netflix. A little more motivated now. Then you make an action plan. Guess what? It's already done for you. Beachbody did it. We're lucky. Okay, we have the action plan done. So you just got to decide that you're going to do it and remind yourself of the reasons that you're doing it. Okay, then you have to change the little story that you're telling yourself as to why it's okay that you're being a lazy asshole. At least that's what I have to do. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're not being a lazy asshole. Congratulations. But I am a lot of the time. You got to change that story so that you can change your action. Then you set yourself up to win by creating a space or sweetening the deal, having things in front of you that really light your fire, brighten your world. And then step six, you got to take massive action. And this isn't like take a little bit of action and like if you've been lazy, just follow your activity tracker and like try to get the bare minimum done. If you're trying to motivate yourself, don't do the bare minimum because we're motivated by forward motion. We're motivated by success. So go balls to the wall, go all in and put in the work that it takes to get yourself a freaking win. Get yourself a win. If you're not getting it with the amount of things on the business activity tracker, freaking double it. Because honestly, most of us, most of us can find the time, unless you're Lisbeth Koning, in which case you are using every single minute of every single day in like such a specific way, Lisbeth, you are excused from this part of the conversation. You are the most efficient human being on the planet and you get all the awards. But for most of us, we use, yeah, I see you, I see you. I recognize that. Um, but for most of us, we could be using our time a little bit more efficiently, right? We could be using our time a little bit better to fill in some of those things that are going to get us closer to our goals rather than filling in with the dumb little things that are not getting us closer to our goals. And we know that, most of us. So, so it's time to take massive action, not like a little bit, but enough to get yourself some freaking momentum and some wins and to feel confident in your ability, which takes a shit ton of practice. And then... Finally, the last step in making a massive change, you guys have already done. And it's plugging into a community of people that give a crap. And we have that. That's why the people who show up on these team calls, like there's people who don't show up on these calls, but they're getting on the team boom ones, or they're getting on Bailey's, or they're getting on other ones. And you can tell the people who are getting on these calls who are plugged into the community, who are communicating with other coaches outside of like, you know, the every three month events. Those are the coaches that are doing something that are building their business. And it's the same for any aspect of your life. If you want to do health and fitness thing and you weren't a part of Beachbody, you're going to really, really struggle to make that change without a community. And that's why we have jobs, right? That's why we coach because people do need communities of those who are motivated, inspired, and rocking at a higher level than you. For me, this is one of my goals this year. Find five. I have that hashtag on every single like window of my house, of my car, and every single page of my notebook. Find five. I'm trying to find five people who are kicking ass harder than me to surround myself with. Okay, so what team calls do I need to be getting on? people who have done this better than me, longer than me, and I respect in that way. That's the community that I need to find. So those are the steps. Those are the seven steps to making a change, to changing anything. And you can apply that to, like I said, any area of your life. So when you are in the cycle of self-sabotage and you're going pain, action results, drive goes down, pain lessons. So less action. And then you're starting right back over. That's when you have to kind of create your own pain. 
That's when you start this cycle and you get disturbed about something and you go through this process and you brain dump everything. And guys, it's really, really hard to do this in more than one area at the same time. Like if we're talking massive, massive, massive change, it's really, really, really hard if you're like in a, in a really, really bad place with your health and fitness, you're not doing anything about it you're like not on your game at all in any way, shape or form. It's really going to be hard for you to make your business activity tracker, like all the inviting coaching stuff. It's going to be hard for you to do both at the same time, but that's why the business activity tracker has incorporated like a balance there because we don't want you to do all coaching stuff and not take care of yourself. We don't want you to just take care of yourself and exclude the outside community. So that's why that balance is there. So anyway, I hope that helps. I hope you guys can apply it. And if you have any feedback at all as to things that, that um, would have been helpful to be added in or questions to that process, I am going to be doing this on the Dash to Diamond call tomorrow. And I would really appreciate any feedback that you can give me, um, anything that you think I should change or like questions that you have about it. And we're going to Holy crap, a heater is on and I am sweating balls of mine. Okay, we good, we good. I'm still sweating a lot because I'm in a sweater sitting on, like above a heater, but we're gonna go through and I'm actually going to stop the recording. Stop.